What's going on, all you wild cowboys out there? It's your two favorite ranch hands back here for Cinefellas. <laughs> Tonight, these wild boys are going to be reviewing and talking about one of their favorite shows on the biggest show on television right now. Yes, of course, we're talking about Kevin Costner and the, the Dutton family in the new season of Yellowstone on Paramount+. Plus. I say we give everything to this land. I do mean everything. Before we get into that, I'm one of the cowgirls tonight. I'm Logan Myers. This is my good mate over there. I'm Henry Hill, and we're back talking about Yellowstone yet again. I can't believe it's on the fifth season. Feels like the show's like flying by year to year. I still remember when the first season premiered, and then quickly they shot. Uh, yeah, it felt pretty quickly after that that season two kind of continued the momentum. And ever since then, every season, the show's just built upon itself and gotten bigger and bigger in uh you know culture and pop culture and just the amount of viewers goes up every year and uh this season's no different and what a huge year because you know john dutton there has become the governor he's went from you know the guy that we saw at the beginning of the show obviously has this huge ranch and now he's ascended all the way to governor so you know where's this show gonna lead to how big is it gonna get and you know, it's going to start crumbling all around Mr. Dutton as things always do in this show. You know, nobody, no sin goes unpunished and uh, all the family members, everybody's scheming against each other. And uh, the season's, you know, really putting that into focus, his rise to power, but like everybody around him making moves and working against him. And uh, yeah, you can just feel the noose tightening around him and then where it ends up at the end of this, you know, half season you know, it's going to get really crazy in the second half. Next season, I'll be president for some odd reason. But uh, that's where he, <laughs> right. he starts yeah. just running the ranch. You know, the Dutton family's owned it, for, as we talked about in our other reviews, since the 1800s, found, you know, finding the land, fighting for the land, all the bad guys that come up across them, you know, over the years, developers, you know, the tribe, you know, just each season, it's a different bad guy or bad lady, just a group of bad people. And they're always trying to take down the Duttons and they always scheme and come up with a plan to take them out, you know, and leads to the next season. So this is definitely much, you know, as we we're discussing a Western soap opera, much like the show Dallas back in the day, but man, it's a damn good show. We've been fo following this since episode one. I remember it was released and we were, I reviewed it right after it was released and, here we are five seasons later and um you know so watching this getting better and better each season when taylor sheridan showrunner of this his creation the one that started it all you know you just fall in love with these characters you know there's a lot of drama to it it's a lot of funny you know scenes in it as well but uh it really grabs you as an audience it gets better and better and season five being that case it just felt like it was an excellent season just to set up a john dutton being governor you know that bad things are going to happen ruffle some feathers along the way when he's has that sort of power in Montana. More episodes this season too. If halfway points eight, then there's going to be 16, I imagine. And uh, yeah, that's the biggest season so far. It feels like there's a lot of uh, setting up what's going to come in the second half, showing John Dutton, you know, not knowing what to do as governor, having to rely on his assistant and, you know, really rely on his friends that he's made from uh, the past on the show coming back and, uh, you know, advising him on how to move forward. And as you can see, he has a lot to uh, go up against, you know, local and the local tribesmen and all that are, you know, they're trying to stop this pipeline from going through and, you know, eventually he agrees with them and they kind of, he kind of brings them in. But at the same time, then you have his son, Jamie, who has always been a thorn in his side and always in the, <laughs> the family side and Beth's side having this, uh, you know, trial going on and fall in, lo in love with this rival lawyer and then scheming to eventually get his dad out of power, um, you know, leading into the, uh, seemingly trying to impeach his father as governor, which is just crazy. And, you, you know, Beth finding out and, you know, she wants to kill him. And I'm yeah. surprised that she hasn't yet. Uh, this family's crazy and uh, they get crazier every season. Um, all the family members are back. Case, uh, Casey and Monica, uh, early on in the season, they lose their child. She was pregnant. She had a miscarriage, pretty brutal stuff to watch, very emotional. And they had to go through a lot as a couple. You know, they had some problems in earlier seasons, but they've really grown as a couple. And this, you know, could have tore them apart, but it's brought them together 
Um, by the time this mid seasons came along, they've had a lot to deal with rip wheelers back. Of course, he's still the head, you know, the head ranch ranch hand on the farm. He's in charge of keeping everybody together. You know, you got the bunkhouse boys still getting wild every night. Um, a lot of things happening, uh, involving, uh, you know, the, the ranch hands, um, some wolves getting killed on the property and that leading, uh, you know, into the authorities being notified. And you can see that that's probably going to come into play too. In the second half, half of the season, they're going to find out what actually happened and that's going to get them in trouble there too. Really ruffled some feathers with John being governor. And then they find in some, uh, you know, wolves that are dead with that, the collars on them to track them there, you know, on the Dutton land. So going back to the governor doesn't look good, you know, leads to the bunkhouse boys and rip trying to, you know, clean up the evidence of what exactly they did accidentally. Um, so it sets up a lot of great uh, on the edge of your seat scenes. I, I would say, you know, it just felt like you're not sure what's going to happen. Is you know Dutton going to get pinched? Is Rip going to get taken away? It keeps you guessing, which I really appreciate. There's so many characters in the show that really that you love. You know, it's such a great supporting cast. There's like 25 different characters, but it, you get you get to spend enough time with each of the characters throughout the show through the eight you know episodes of season two. They just keep getting better and better. The Bunkhouse Boys are always crazy you have what teeter <laughs> which is uh landon's yes. daughter she's really michael great landon. michael landon's daughter she's fantastic in the show she's hard to understand they kind of crack jokes at her you know maybe you'll learn how to talk when you go to texas and <laughs> you know stuff like that she's like one of the guys and she really fits in i love the whole crew got lloyd you know it's been there for since the beginning and he's really fantastic and you know jimmy being in texas at the four sixes ranch they kind of lead into uh, coming up and it's going to be that spinoff show they're going to have with him, but they kind of lead into that, why they ended up, why they're going to, you know, Texas. So a lot of moving pieces in this, but you know, it all really works, you know, works out, works to the advantage. And, you know, people are always trying to get the Duttons and all these characters and get them off the land or kill them or whatever. So stakes are really high and it's even better when you have a guy like this as governor of the state. Yeah, he's great. Kevin Costner is just great in this role. You know, he really brings that bravitas to the role you really buy him being the head of this ranch he's the cool calm and collected guy who's always you know thinking 10 steps ahead of everybody else um let's hope he's you know thinking even further ahead because he's got the walls are coming down around him as the season goes on he's gonna have to really outthink his opponents and outsmart his own son and his own family members in, in order to survive and ultimately have this ranch survive. It's crazy to think how Taylor Sheridan keeps all these, you know, moving pieces going, all these spinoffs, everything moving together, coordinated. It's crazy. This guy's mind must be just like, you know, you see like a vision board on the wall with bubbles and everything that his mind just must be full of this stuff, creating this, you know, whole world. Uh, Yellowstone universe and keeping everything straight and all these side stories. Yeah. Like you mentioned, all the side characters, they get plenty to do. Uh, Ryan, uh, the ranch and Ryan, he gets a love interest, like a country singer. Uh, so even the minor players that we haven't seen too much of before, you know, coming into prominence, he's really building them up and look forward to probably seeing some more spinoffs come out of this in the future. As long as he keeps producing, you know, successful spinoffs, keeping everything straight uh, and we'll see how the four sixes uh, does too, but uh, it's just crazy what he's done here and Yellowstone just keeps on getting better. We'll see what happens in the second half. It was a little slow to build up with the more episodes. I think they're taking their, their time building it up. And I have a feeling that the last batch of episodes are just going to be crazy. <laughs> Something crazy is going to happen at the end. I don't think everybody's going to survive this season. It feels like a, a pretty big season and some pretty big events that are going to come out that are going to, change it from here on out taylor sheridan's looking at the big picture here he's really drawing everything out it's taking his time crafting this world and keeping everybody interested you know and, and all these characters and what they're all doing it's just it's a bit slow but it's building up you know something crazy is going to happen you know there's gonna be some big deaths and some really shocking scenes some cliffhangers and stuff like that leading to the other season but i'm really excited for the second half a season five that's coming out this summer they just announced that but uh first part eight episodes had an absolute blast with it. My favorite show on TV. I've been watching for five seasons. I'm always excited for the new episode on Paramount Plus, and they don't disappoint. Every episode is really top notch, and they really crapped out these characters. A lot of bad guys coming along the way. A lot of great shots of the beautiful mountains of Montana. Just a beautiful looking show. Really great camera work directing, and uh, 
obviously the uh, performances alone. Only minor complaint I have uh, from me is it feels like it's a continuous country music video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of country yeah, yeah. music. It feels it like there's like no dialogue. There's like country always playing. It's a bit too much, mm-hmm. especially this season. I noticed it more. I'm like, okay, yeah. we get the point. But that's only a minor mm-hmm. complaint. But everything else I really appreciated about this favorite show on TV. And you guys should definitely check it out and, and binge it if you've not seen it. We highly recommend it. So I'm giving season five, part one of Yellowstone, a four and a half out of five. Kevin Costner hair pieces. <laughs> I agree with everything that you said. And that too, about the long drawn out sequences where country music's playing and they're showing like a, around the ranch. They've relied yeah. on that a lot this season. I noticed that too. Kind of cheesy in some parts, but it's, you know, it's part of why we love it. There's cheesy parts to it. It feels like a modern day version of Dynasty, like we were talking about. You yes. know, it's it's gonna have that. It's 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 a show after all. It's not realistic. I mean, some parts are obviously realistic, but it's over the top, and that's part of the reason that we love it. And Taylor Sheridan, uh, another great uh, half season of uh, Yellowstone, the OG show. And I am going to give Yellowstone season five, the first half of episodes, a four out of five. Casey Dutton hair pieces. I love you, Monica. <laughs> Want to hear from all you wild ranch hands out there. What did you like about season five of Yellowstone thus far? What didn't you like about it? What's your favorite season? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to click subscribe. Also check out these wild cowboys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and our website, cinefellas.com for the latest, greatest TV, movie, news, and reviews. So let's talk about it. We were talking a little bit about all the spinoffs. Uh, make one up in your head right now. What's like an off the wall spinoff that you'd create just going by what the characters in this universe, like uh, think of one in a couple seconds here. Teeter, Teeter and Jimmy in some like rom-com situation or sitcom <laughs> situation, just like them. Yeah. They're just roommates in New York. That'd be funny. Yeah. Like perfect strangers kind of. Yeah. Perfect strangers. <laughs> there you go. Just like that. And then, you know, some Love of the story. Rip shows up randomly on a horse in New York. Just like, Jimmy. <laughs> All right. That's what I would do. What about that you? That would be funny. Oh, tough one here. Let's see. Maybe uh, we'll, we catch up with Lloyd years down the road. He's in like a nursing home and he has to deal with all the other like just city folks and dumbasses. And he's just like this old curmudgeon, you know, old country guy who, uh, you know, <laughs> berates him and just like Uncle Steve. Hey, sign me up. I'd watch that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What will Taylor Sheridan come up with next? We'll have to wait and see. He's probably got about 10 more shows up his sleeve. So we'll have to see what the, they announce with that. But that guy's a crazy mastermind and I love him. Yes, sir. We both love Yellowstone and we are sure that you all do too. Let us know in the comments uh, what you guys loved about the first half, what you didn't like, and what you're looking forward to uh, seeing happening. Um, me for one i definitely want jamie to go i feel like he's like done too much against the family he's just kind of a thorn on everybody's side here he's like you know it feels like he's gonna go with the family and then he stabs him in the back yet again it's time for jamie to go that's what i say west bentley he's a good actor but uh it's time he paid his price i think (laughs) he's such a good villain too he's such a bad guy and it's such a sneaky piece of shit you know you can't trust obviously <laughs> yeah and um he does a great job but yeah they kind of dive yes. into the train station this season i forgot yeah. to add uh, so maybe he'll end up at the old train station and if you guys don't know what that is you can probably take a good guess but uh it'd be interesting if they finally took him out i, I would much appreciate that probably beth too i could see beth doing it <laughs> she hates <laughs> yeah him, obviously with their history miss kelly riley right. miss kelly riley Well, boys, it's been fun talking about Yellowstone, the first half of season five. Until next time, I'm Uncle Henry Hill. And I'm Uncle Logan Wheeler, signing out until the next Davey Review. Cheers! Cheers!